Hi, welcome back to Conservative Psychiatry with me, Rebecca, and our psychiatrist, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hello. Glad to be here again. You know, last time around, we talked about uh, bad boys and women's preferences for bad boys and, and why we're attracted to them. And there is a phenomenon that, you know, we have this thing called soy boys. And uh, somehow, some way, women, a particular type of women, seem to adore them as well. So all is not lost if you're not a, a bad boy. But uh, what is a soy boy? And, and why do we call them soy boys? That's, um, this, I've, I've, been, I've been going on a, on a deep dive spiral. Uh, over the past couple of days for this uh to to get an overview over this this subject so so this is going to be a lot of fun uh some things i i didn't i didn't know it was sort of a concept but um so it actually is the case that testosterone is much lower now than 20 years ago so since 1999 it's dropped by 25 percent which is crazy. It's crazy. So it's supposed to testosterone level normally is supposed to be somewhere between 300 and 1000 uh, nanograms per deciliter. And below that, it's low, low T. And so it used to be norm, the normal was around 650. That's 1999. And now it's around 450. And what that happened? is across that's US young males. And uh, Finland, Denmark, Western Europe. So it's across the West. So it's uh, the Danish and Finnish, Finnish study estimated that it uh, decreases with uh, 1% each year. Um, it was just, just that, that's mind blowing, no? Then yeah, that is mind blowing. Why is this happening? I mean, uh, we do have those people out there, you know, that says, that, oh, testosterone is dangerous, even though they give them to kids that say that they're boys, yeah, even though they're so girls. They're not so dangerous uh, anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they say it's dangerous. But, um, yeah. uh, if it is in, if it is in grown normal males, but here we have a huge issue because testosterone is really important for the male body, right? So, how did how is this happening yeah there are um there there's a couple of theories one so what they have we'll start with what they have definitely found and then we'll work our way through uh, to towards conspiracy lane <laughs> so we have we really f they were they found that so in the 1960s they had this drastic shift of uh oh fats are dangerous for you and everyone jumped on that train fats are dangerous for you it causes heart disease uh, which turns out not to be the case but then they removed a lot of meat from the diets and they started people on low fat diets that became the thing so what substituted the meat was more carbs and uh, that they really have uh, linked to lower testosterone so you have low fat diet lower testosterone uh, and uh, cardio so endurance lots of endurance training can decrease testosterone and lifting weights will increase testosterone so there is a way out and i think that you've seen this you're also in an urban area affluent liberal area you see so the, what's all the rage now is these uh, uh are these marathons uh s cycle races you know that's so from my point of view that that's what people are doing now together in couples so because women like that sort of training a lot and women are working out more than they used to as well so uh, that can be some of the cause then you have um then you have what they call um uh, endocrine um edcs so endocrine disrupting uh, chemicals and they're found in food packaging in care products in in everything and they they will leak into what we ingest and what we put on our bodies so that that definitely also has an effect and then they're they're talking about how much and which types so they're called so the important ones are phthalates biphenyl a's uh, ddt which is uh, pest, uh, pesticides and uh, uh, pcbs which is po polychlorinated biphenyls and they 
um, what they'll do is that they will mimic androgen. So testosterone is an androgen. So they will go in and they'll say, uh, they'll bind to the androgen receptor and they'll send then something um, that's called hormonal regu uh, regulatory, um, um, so ho hormonal regulatory um, feedback, sorry feedback um happens and that's then this the binding is telling the body signaling because uh, hormones need signaling right they signal to each other up production down production and so the body is sort of told you can go have a nap but we don't need more hormones here and the body will down regulate its production so they've seen that when they take guys uh off of this they, they have done a couple of studies where they give uh, men so lots of soy and s soy products are one of these edcs when they take them off them after a while they up the testosterone production again so because once you take away this mimicking effect the body says okay you know we need more we need hormone more hormones in the system and it starts producing it again and this happens with a variety of of hormones when we uh when we um manipulate the hormonal system it's so hormones are very very interesting and very difficult endocrinology is a very difficult field in medicine because we know that hormones are the uh, the most potent things we have in low in low dosage so you can give a very very small amount of hormones and have quite a significant effect so that's the big critique of birth uh, birth control pills, which we might get to later, is that why do we give the same dose, just blankets, to all women who come and, and, and ask for birth control pills when we know that hormones work so differently and in so different doses, some need a very, very small amount and others can take a larger amount, but still. So that's what's really interesting about hormones. So that's why we know that it's a problem when we see that we find these compounds, we find them in wastewater, we found them, find them in surface water and drinking water. And we see, so they found in fish and amoebas around these uh, treatment plants, they found, find that fish have, have uh, started producing uh, female reproductive uh, organs. Um, what? So that's, that's a problem. Yes, they found that. Um, and then they find select cases where men have, have, uh, very low testosterone for example and they find um like for example this one that i mentioned the the bisphenol a uh, they found that men who have that in their urine have lower testosterone so, so what can i ask i just i know hormones are really important for our body it's super important and mm -hmm. this is why giving hormones to kids is not a good idea to, to put it lightly but um what what happens to guys when their testosterone levels decreases and you know what what what's what does that do to a man to not have testosterone in yeah, the they'll have uh, they'll have more feminized features so higher uh, tone of voice but this is this is interesting when you see because women uh we prefer different kinds of men uh when d depending on where we are in our cycle so um so you or you're not on birth control as i think we can say that we can um, say that yeah, yeah. No. hell <laughs> let me say this hell no I'm not on birth control. Hell no. We'll <laughs> exactly. get back to that. But, but, but yeah. You know, you, you know, sometimes I know like we can't record because like Rebecca is <laughs> like, I don't want to deal with her today. <laughs> so you, so you'll have a natural hormone. Uh, s hormone fluctuation. So when once when we're in our ovulatory phase, when we're going through is that ovulation <laughs> in the middle of the cycle, we'll have high estrogen, low progesterone, and then there's a play going on where afterwards we'll have the progesterone will rise and the estrogen will fall, and that's typically when we feel awful, right? So they 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 know this that when women are in that non-ovulatory period, which is for women on birth control all the time. 
adults. So that will mimic that non-fertile phase. They prefer men with uh, j softer jaw lines, with not such masculine features. So the brow, um, sort of higher voice, um, non-aggressive traits. Because when we're in that phase, we want to be taken care of. We want emotional support. We're looking for stability. Like we're, we're looking for, then we're, we're sort of getting ready to make <laughs> to make the babies. To make the babies so to to take care of the babies we want to feel safe um we don't want to be just taken so we're so they so so that's that that's an issue that for so many generations now a lot of women have been taking birth control because it does take sort of 60 to 100 years before we see mate selection have uh have an influence on the traits that are expressed so yeah but was, yeah did that answers the question so low testosterone you'll have feminized features right so that was uh, the answer which is why we have soy right. boys excuse me for a minute because my cat <laughs> is being a little bit hormonal today <laughs> go ahead go ahead okay <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, um, <laughs> feminized men. And what does that do to us? I mean, we talked a little bit about that in the previous episode. It does change. It does change our offspring, Hannah. It does. When yeah. women choose feminized men and then reproduce. And also, let's, let's get into the birth control thing. Because... Because it is an important point. A lot of young girls in Norway, I, I can't remember the age limit that we have for that, but you're giving free birth control from a very young age. I think it's 16. Is it 16? Yeah, I think it's 16. I think you can get it before. Really? 16? Okay, let's say Without 16. parental consent. Yeah, okay, without know. parental consent. Yeah. So... A lot of young girls start starts birth control. I'm, I don't mind using myself as an example here because I started birth control when I was 16. Um, it is the worst thing that I ever did to my body. Like I can eat junk food or I can, you know, be really healthy or I can do this or use products with chemicals that is not good for me. But mm -hmm. birth control is by far the the most significant thing that i did so i went on and off so i had been on it for years i went off it and i can tell you the personality changes that comes with yeah. that because because I've, right. I've lived it dark yeah it is um and you know it's sort of like a jacqueline and hyde kind of thing <laughs> when you're on birth control you don't really you don't really um because it, it's so slow so you yeah. change over time right you you can't really feel the change that is happening yeah um and a lot of girls get depression there's a lot of side effects yeah to this. because we, when your progesterone's um you 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 feel depressed you feel fatigued you feel you feel like the wor your f worst self when you're in that non ovulatory yeah. phase i always dread it and what was so so surprising for me when i went off that the pill that many 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 years ago now um was that in that when i f when in that third hour window i felt amazing the, yes. the libido was high. I was like, the, everything you're glowing, great. you're I happy, so happy, and that uh, yeah. we're robbing girls of that. And and you have now more and more examples because people are becoming aware of this. What we're talking about, and it, there's this, this. I don't remember exactly how many, but a lot of young women are now coming off or, choo or choosing not to take them. And there are stories of uh, of girls breaking up with their boyfriends when going off the pill because oh, yeah, that's the difference a, is that big and that they have suddenly she changed she, she didn't find him attractive anymore she changed and that so so that's the you know back to how potent hormones are so it's, it's just a little pill it's just a little but that we that uh, it has a, a significant a significant effect so that's why when people say yeah. oh no these soy products because we, we're these uh these these uh, soy is one of these um these products that could potentially bind to these receptors because uh, they they have phytoestrogens in them 
And they say, so they have a couple of studies that say, oh, no, no, they did a two huge meta-analysis on this where they said there's no significant link between soy and low testosterone. And I went into that and I saw, okay, they're funded by the government and uh, the soy industry. So that's of course, interesting. the soy industry. Not to go into sort of to touch the conspiracy lane, but you do have to always be very aware of who's funding these things because of obviously I understand someone who manufactures uh, glue isn't going to fund uh, studies that investigate the, the safety of soy. Of course, uh, but are you surprised when they, they say no? There's no significant. We don't more research is needed to really this glue is so this. clean you can so, sniff it and that, that like for example there's this amazing example that in the 50s they found that um they did huge huge uh, uh thing of research on smoking on smoking and lung cancer and they had modern statistics they had all the te technologies of the 50s and they found that no link between smoking and lung cancer and who funded the tobacco industry and of we course. know now better Right. So it's a, would you do have to be conscious of who's behind? So that there are a couple of smaller studies that are being critiqued for their small sample size, but they did put 35 men on high levels of soy and found a very significant drop in, in testosterone. They did find, and as I said, then when they took them off it and they say, well, these are very high doses, right? So I doubt that. So how much soy milk are you really drinking? So you do have to say, I doubt that so many because the levels of testosterone across the West have dropped so significantly. I doubt that soy is the lone. Um, oh, it's not a lone wolf, right, but you need to keep like, in mind that, not, you know, too, that would be too, but I, I, I do believe that, that we have to watch out for these EDCs, uh, these, uh, everything that's in the, the food packaging and recycled stuff is the worst for that when it comes to leaking into food and beverages. Mm. So, so I do think that, and, and then there's the cultural element, right? The, the, um, because men, they're driven by status. They want to, they, they, they have a different motivational system than we do. So they want to strive for, for status in the hierarchy where, where they find themselves. So in an environment where, uh, you know, where, where people are vegan and they're like where we live, you know, where women, um, have a certain set of beliefs and they enjoy feminized men they're on birth control you know that's sort of the feminized man is appreciated men will then in their striving for status um they will compete to become the most feminized man right does that make sense like they will that climb any yeah. hierarchy where they're where they find themselves and where they think okay i can excel at this and they they compete the best when it's about getting the attention of women so then obviously and I, I thought i had this great experience actually that shows this so i was in uh, i have friends in norway and uh i was there and a, a boyfriend of an acquaintance of mine he's like one of these like vikings like monster of a man or he was blonde like the works it's like looks like yeah a and I, <laughs> I come back a couple of years later and i sit down with them and i'm shocked absolutely absolutely taken aback because here he was i wasn't sure if it was him big glasses neckline like thin scarf like and tight 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 pants lots of ankle showing and sitting even his mannerisms were very different like lots of teeth showing the whole time like i have doing... never thought about it but ankle showing in men ankle is actually a very feminine trait yeah of course <laughs> like who want you know like tight tight pants and like the way even the way he was yeah. sitting it was this sort of pretty pose you know with this big the way that that he, he, he was speaking like a like a woman like a like the like an alpha woman and i was just thinking i mean he can't have eaten that much soy right <laughs> just how much and then i just realized like it's a religion 
it's a religion. Whenever it someone is. tells you, like, I'm a vegan, you can, with some accuracy, guess at their belief system, right? And they mm -hmm. wear different clothes and they have different motivations and they have, you know, they, they go to the, the, the same kind of things. You, you sort of know what they're going to say. It's a, they, they use the same language as well. It's become this religion. And it is. I'm pretty sure that if you took this now uh, Viking boy and uh, put him in a relationship with, let's say, you, who's not on birth control and who wouldn't encourage this sort of, because they also, they, they want the encouragement of the girl that they're dating, right? So if you don't say, oh, so great with all that ankle showing or like, you're looking so good in those <laughs> tight pants, they would, I think that you would see the return of the monster Viking in a goddamn hurry. <laughs> well, it's that's uplifting. I mean, women saying like, yeah, "Oh, you're looking so good," and all those glasses, and like, it's, it's. <laughs> I mean, the first thing I did when I got in, uh, when I started dating my husband, was like I threw away the the cartoon T-shirts. Like, so I'm like, this is like, this isn't the Big Bang Theory, right? It, it's so. I think men very much. Uh, they they want the encouragement and the appreciation of the woman that they're dating. So we're of course. So um so I think that there's this cultural and psychological element to the soy boys as well as the But I want to put one point forth though, Hannah, even though you can't eat that much soy, I mean to turn <laughs> a from a viking to an ankle showing I've skinny pants hipster soy. overnight. I mean, um, there is a lot of just to go down that lane. Soy is in pretty much any processed food. They put soy in everything. I don't yeah. know about you, but for me, when I go food shopping, first of all, I'm very simple. I eat the same thing all the time. Meat, eggs, butter, meat, eggs, butter, and then some cheese. Usually that's what I eat. So when yeah. I l look at something and I'm, I'm like, okay, this, uh, this looks interesting or I want a snack or something, because that does happen. I'm not on birth control. So my cycle is like this and I need to eat something sweet, right? So I look at stuff. I look at the index of stuff and it's shocking when mm -hmm. you start reading the labels because yeah. soy is everywhere. Yeah, also in Europe, right? Because then you have to also look at, because if you compare, I've done this, compare the, um, uh, what's it called? The food, the label of, mm -hmm. of American food and the stuff that's, uh, uh, sold in Europe. They're, they're quite different. Like also the, the high fruit of fr fructose corn syrup. Um, and the, so, but there has to be more than that because the levels are decreasing equally in northern western european countries as in the us yeah so i do think that there's also that cultural element and um there has to be more than the soy explanation no i think you i think you're sense? absolutely right and it does absolutely make sense um the soy boy low testosterone we can change it essentially is what you're saying because yeah it is meat, a combination exactly mm. meat uh, uh, uh lift weights um don't go on these low fat uh crazes eat clean food as clean as, as clean as possible um and uh yeah lifestyle is a has a huge effect so bmi and general health if you have any diseases disorders but bmi is a huge predictor of good testosterone uh testosterone level but past 30 it's going to decrease and decrease so that's just that's just how it is that's life yeah yeah but go uh, there there are, um there are a lot i think yeah so around 40 percent of males have the have the normal amount of testosterone so it's, it's a high likelihood that you that you might have that so yeah go go check it go check it and remember this is this sir is your checklist are you showing too much ankle? 
Are your jeans <laughs> a little too skinny? Are your glasses Are you making oversized? this face in pictures? <laughs> <laughs> then you need to <laughs> throw everything away, start over, it's eat, so eat go to the gym. It's so yeah. And find a new girlfriend, not on birth control, uh, and make some babies. I think that's about that is a that's the sum up, Hannah. That's a it was a good sum up. I'm but I concur. I concur. Okay, then I will. We're at the end here. I'm gonna encourage you to go check out Hannah's Substack. Uh, you can also find our video library uh, at Psychobabble with Hannah on hannah spear on youtube um we have you you created it all playlist uh, hannah where yeah, there's we put the all our episodes. psychiatry playlist on youtube and on uh, hannah spear substack you can go and look at the all the episodes but it the it's first here on on x yes so with that we say thank you and see you again next week see you